Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Whitfield coming to you on this Wednesday, November 12, 2014, welcoming you to our Wednesday night Time in the Word segment. Today, we're going to be talking about a true worshiper. And we're going to be going into the scripture in just a very few moments. But let us pray before we go right into the Word of the Lord. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for this day. We thank you for, as always, for your many manifold blessings towards us. And God, we're just grateful that we are here to serve you, hear from you, and to honor you. Now, God, open up our ears that we might hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto us today, through your word, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today, we're going to be looking at Matthew's, the fourth chapter, and reading from verses 8 through 11. And we begin reading at verse 8 in the King James Version of Matthew's, the fourth chapter, and it reads as follows. And again, the devil taken him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Amen. And if you really, those of us that fully understand worship, one thing that we know that worship is based upon is a truthfulness of knowing who God truly is and knowing what God's word says. And Jesus said unto him, and said unto him, all Satan, the Jesus said in verse 10, then say Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the first thing that Jesus let him know is one, that the word of the Lord state that we should worship the Lord God himself and him only. So before a person can become a worshiper, they must have an attention span as it pertains to God that is undivided, not one that can easily be distracted. And knowing the object of their worship. Now I hear a lot of people confusing praise and worship. Praise is when you're grateful, showing gratitude and thanking God for what he has done for you. Praise can be done in many different forms. Some people use the expression of vocalization. Some people use the, the gratitude of waving their hands or various body movements. Some people dance what really we call shouting in the church, but shouting is done with the mouth. Dancing is done with the feet and it involves the entire body and can also involve the utilization of the vocalization of one's acceptance or thanks towards what the Lord has done. So your entire body can be involved in the praise process. But worship is completely deeper then praise, because praise, for lack of a better term or usage, can be superficial based of what God has done. But a true worshiper knows the object of their affection, and the true worshiper is seeking to only give praise or give to worship or, to, or honor unto God. Not that you can't do it in praise, but worship is the very vehicle that takes you into a deeper realm with God. When you worship God, you come into a deeper place with Him, and you connect more so with His Spirit. Tune in bi-weekly on social media to hear the word of the Lord through Pastor Woodfield. Join us in be empowered by the word of the Lord unto you.
and connect more so with his spirit in a place that you're not easily distracted from it. Now, just because a person calls themselves a Christian and go to a church and sit in that church does not make one a worshiper. I know that we call some of our services the worship service, but a worship experience and a worship service are completely two different things. Now notice, in this particular instance, Jesus has been fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights in the presence of the Lord, which means that he is completely and fully focused. Now many of us will look at the fact that he has been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. His spirit man is strong. His flesh is weak because it has not been fed, but his, his mental faculties and his ability to discern has been sharpened and increased. And what the devil came after was the weakness in Jesus' flesh. But his spirit man was fully alert when one fast coupled along with, with worship praise and study of the word and prayer, we gain strength in the inward man, on the inside of our bodies, on the inside of our soul, our spirit man becomes strong. He increased because the man of the flesh has decreased. And when a person is a true worshiper, the fleshly realm of their lives have to have had decreased significantly in order for them to enter into the truthfulness of worship. A true worshiper must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. As Jesus told the woman at the well, the true worshiper must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You cannot begin to worship the Father unless you have been truthful. Know the truth of his word and know the truthfulness about one's life. When you're dealing in truth, asking God to expose truth about you, asking God to expose who you are, asking God to reveal what's going on in your heart, and you are being truthful with God and are in pursuit of aligning one's life with the truth by making sure that anything that is wrong in one's personal life or existence is being addressed completely in the presence of the Lord. A true worshiper must worship God in spirit and in truth because God is a spirit. We cannot worship God based upon the earthly realm, the fleshly realm. We must enter into the spiritual realm. And many of you are probably questioning, how do I do that? Even Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be born again. It takes the Spirit of God inhabit, inhibiting man coming to live within men's hearts that causes us to worship God in spirit and in truth. Worship involves your releasing of the carnal realm and everything that is around you and not concern about what you will gain from the natural realm, but more so focus on what you will enter into in the realm of the spirit. Worship, seemingly to many of us, is not a natural act. It is solely 
a spiritual act. Let me repeat that again. Worship is not a natural act. It is a spiritual act where one it takes himself, take himself out of the earthly realm to allow God by his spirit that he has put inside of us once we're saved and born again in the worship experience to enter in to the heavenly realm. Worship takes us out of the natural state. Although we are in a physical body, it takes us into the realm of the presence of the Spirit of God and into spiritual matters and into a place in the realm that cannot be molested by the earth. Notice here, and verse 8, and again the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain. Worship is far above the earthly realm. Worship takes you completely out of the natural realm. But here Lucifer attempts to emulate a worship experience by taking Jesus to a high place. But notice the high place was a mountain that is faced upon the earth, trying to be deceptive, trying to take him to the highest place that he can possibly take him to, and considers that to be a place where worship is elevated at a heightened place. But notice this, and in this false set of worship, he presents to Jesus all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of each of those kingdoms. Every last one of those kingdoms that he showed the Lord, Jesus Christ, was temporal. All of those kingdoms and the glory thereof would fade away. But the glory of the kingdom of Jesus Christ and his father Jehovah God would last forever. And you'll see the brilliancy of that in the latter chapters of the book of Revelation. Where the new Jerusalem ascends out of the sky. God himself is the brilliancy of the sun. As you in, his glory is so bright and so brilliant that it will never be suppressed or extinguished. And here is Lucifer offering Jesus falsehood. Notice I said early, earlier that they that worship the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. So now he offers him the kingdoms of this world and its fading glory. And said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou would fall down and worship me. If you would reverence me. If you will enter into my realm of spirituality. It's what he's telling him. If you would worship me and come into the realm of of demonic activity, which was a snare and a trap that he was setting for Jesus Christ to take the falsehood or the false or the short-lived glory of this world, the temporal world, and bow himself to him. He would give him all the kingdoms of the world. Remember, Lucifer said that he would be that he would exalt his throne above God. And what he's trying to do is get God to worship him. And since Jesus is the God man on the earth, 
What Lucifer is attempting to do is get God to bow down and worship him through the weakness of Jesus' flesh with the 40 days and 40 nights that he has fasted in the wilderness thinking that he will succumb to a, a, a spirit of weakness and worship the false God as opposed to staying on point and communicating that the true God, Jehovah, is the only one who is worthy of worship, worthy of adoration, and worthy of bowing to. Notice, whenever we're in a weakened state, the first thing that the devil wants us to do is focus in on the fleshly, earthly, temporal realm. But a true worshiper will never succumb to the temporalness of this world. They are able to discern and smell And to pick up the deceptive devices in nature and the spirit of manipulation that wants to get them out of the realm of the spirit. How you can tell a true worshiper from a false worshiper or pretend worshiper is that a false worshiper or an immature worshiper will not stay in the presence for an extended period of time. They are more so concerned about the fleshly realm and those things that are around them, things that are more important to them, are those temporal things, their car, their houses, their land, their bank account. But a true worshiper will always enter into the presence of the Lord despite what is going on around them. And they are not distracted to be removed out of that place of worship until God has finished dealing with them and until they have apprehended all that God wants from them. Now, worship is connected deeply with prayer. But worship also has the ability to transport you out of the natural carnal realm and takes you into heavenly realms of elevation far upon that which most Christians dare to enter into. It takes you into a deeper state of God to ascend beyond the first court, the outer court, the holy place, and takes you into the holies of holies, where not are, we're to the point where you're not waiting upon a visitation of God. But worship at an elevated level of maturity and the apprehension and the receiving and the walking into truthfulness delivers you at the very presence of the Almighty God. Worship delivers you into the secret place beyond the veil that still exists today. Although it has been broken and torn a twain, there is a place reserved in worship that takes you to a place in God. that defies the natural logic of what human existence tells us and the limitation of our Christianity has taught us or we perceive incorrectly 
that we cannot worship God on this level. But when we enter into the deeper place of worship with God, we enter into a place where we not only hear angelic angels singing and see angelic beings, but we can see and feel and sense the nearness of heaven. And the spirit man that God has placed on the inside of us when we receive the fullness of salvation longs and craves and even yet demands an audience with God. And it is not content nor satisfied until he, the spirit man on the inside of us, the Holy Ghost has ascended unto the very throne room of God and has intertwined itself in the presence of God and mingled with like spiritual beings that fortifies us and strengthens us and causes us to secure new downloaded information, instructions, fortifications, and the ability to defeat Satan on his territory and on his ground. Now listen, a true worshiper understands the same thing that Jesus said and said unto him and then said Jesus unto him get thee hence Satan for it's written one of the things about a true worshiper when they have fully worshiped God by staying in his presence and let me state this very very clearly worship takes you out of the element of time this thing on my wrist does not dictate to us the length of worship because a true worshiper when they have entered into true worship time is not a factor. They become connected to the eternal existence of God, to realize that in God's presence, there is no time. Because He is an eternal God from everlasting to everlasting, forever and forever. He is the beginning and the ending of this world to take us into a supernatural world that has no conclusion. And we cannot phantom exiting the element of time where there are no time restraints or restrictions. A true worshiper, once they've made that divine connection with God, loses all sense of time. That's why the children of Israel became antsy when Moses was up on the mountain for 40 days and for 40 nights and demanded of Aaron that he make them gods, a calf, to leave them because they know not what became of this man, Moses. Moses was in the presence of the Lord where time was not 
a factor. And many of us become antsy when true worship is going on unto the Father. True worship is more than just us lifting up our hands, closing our eyes, tears flowing down our cheeks, and throwing back our heads and saying, Hallelujah, glory be to God, or worthy is the Lamb. No, that posture and that verbiage out of a pure heart to transport you into eternity although you are still a citizen naturally of the earth because your spirit man has ascended into the very presence of God. And when a true worshiper realizes, they understand everything that has defiled or is defying their worship experience. And notice Jesus said, then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thy serve. There are times in worship that you're going to have to speak to your mind and say, Mind, you're not going to wander. You're not going to think on sinful things that even in the presence of the Lord, when the, when the spirit man is ascending, the natural carnal mind wants you to descend and think about every sin for or everything that you must do or accomplish. But it's when the mind of the man becomes in sync with the mind of the spirit man. And when one has a true worship experience, the worship becomes so profound, so pronounced, and so intense that the mind is drawn in to the place of worship where the spirit man is. And it begins to comprehend information that is being downloaded to it because it's being comprehended by the spirit man communicating to the natural man. Check yourself. Check your position. Check your thought processes. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, that considered not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. He took on the form of a man, but his mind remained spiritual. This is the place where true transformation occurs. In the heart of man. This is the place where the nature of man is being challenged to change into the realm of the spirit. This is the place where the mind is being taught to put off ungodliness. To think upon the ways of God and the nature of God. And to perceive and embrace Fully and completely all that he is. And to walk in the full measure and the stature of who God is. And has created you and I to be. And Jesus understands that when he addresses Satan. Let me get your attention evil one right now. And let me, through the spirit of worship, set this thing in order. The truthfulness is, you are a fallen, defiled, vile spirit. And because I am a true worshiper, Jesus is saying, connected to my Father, He and I are one. Don't get it twisted. Just because the fleshly man is weak does not mean that the spirit man will ever compromise the standards 
of godliness. I know who you are. I was there when God and I and the Holy Spirit cast you out of the mountain of God as profane. Don't get it twisted. I know who you are. And true worshipers know who Lucifer is. They smell him. They discern him. Because in the realm of the spirit, spiritual things are heightened. Spiritual senses. And he goes on to say, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thy worship. Then listen, a true worshiper's worship will repel the devil and his demonic forces. That's why when you go to ministries where the worship is so high, demons have got to flee. This is the place where deliverance takes place. Salvation is realized. Answers to prayers are made clear. And God speaks in such a way that he uses who he chooses to use. Because in true worship, there is a yieldedness of heart, body and soul, that says completely, and this is why we don't worship in many of our functions, in many of our churches, in many of our services, because when we truly have worshipped, and God has stepped in. The, the very statement of the heart is this. Not my will be done. But thy will be done. When the spirit of true worship. And we have engaged in true worship. We're saying to God, do whatever it is that you desire to do. Use whomever you decide to use. If you choose God to have a stay in worship, that's your will. If you choose to just have us pray, that is your will. If you choose to have us to sing a new song in the spirit that we've never sung before, but yet you've given us words and we feel and know that you're in it. Have your way. That means the preacher may not be the designated spokesperson of the hour. It may be someone that God raises up and anoints in that moment and uses them because they have yielded perfectly in that moment, in that hour, unto worship, that they become a vessel that is completely yielded to the Spirit of God, allowing God to use them for whatever the purpose is for the moment that God sees necessary. It is a complete removing of ourselves out of God's way and allowing him to have the preeminence, the right of way, to do what he chooses to do in his house. To do what he chooses to do for that day. And I believe by the Spirit of God that we can get so much more accomplished in the kingdom of Jesus Christ if we would just yield ourselves to the full effects of worship 
the complete surrendering of one's will over to worship. Notice when Jesus made the statement so clear to the devil. Verse 11 says, Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. I believe that when you have fully worshipped the Lord, any oppositional forces that have stood up against you must leave. And God himself assigns the whole host of heaven or angelic beings that are assigned to you to come to you and minister or to serve you at the greatest point of your need for God. See, a true worshiper has come to the point that they understand without God, I can do nothing. Unless he leads, unless he guides, unless he empowers, unless he imposes by me yielding his will into my life, I can and shall accomplish all that he is desirous of me to accomplish. And that true worshiper gets to a point in their lives that God moves in such an excellent way that everything that was around them changes because they have experienced True worship. Now let me share this with you. If there are things in your life that prayer and praise have not resolved, considering finding out the truthfulness of God and applying that truthfulness to your life and asking God to help you to become a true worshiper, and ask him to take you into the very depths and realms of worship. And as you enter into worship, hear me clearly, you will find that the challenges that you could not deal with will be changed by the Spirit of God himself. 